Hello, hello everybody. This is Mimi coming at you that, uh, about repentance. Okay, when we look at the word repentance, we look at it uh, meaning two different things. Um, change of mind and feeling sorry. Uh, when you repent, um, you don't want it to say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, you, you know, you can keep going. No, true repentance is that you feel so bad for what you have done. And that, um, it just, it just, you, you just feel really bad. You know what I mean? And you want to cry out to him because you have sinned against God. You have sinned against whether your body or, or being sometimes another, another person. But you, you repent. It is is a mind change to you know it's a, it's a heart it's a mind change and a heart change. You change your mind about that thing um, that you don't want to do it again, and you will feel so sorry that you did it that you won't want to do it again. Okay, it's changing your mindset and your heart. Okay, now I'm gonna give you some example. I'm gonna give you an example like, um, so like you uh, done something to somebody, and, uh, and hopefully you feel bad about it. If you don't feel bad about it, then then it just become a deeper issue. Um, if you if you if you if your mind keep going through it about you doing doing it to the person, more like you feel bad about it, and so. You repent, and how do you repent if you, if you did something to somebody? First of all, you don't do it again, and you try to make it right. Okay. Um, sometimes it's good to buy the person a gift. Maybe you cuss the person out, but it's good to buy the person a gift. If a person have done you wrong. And maybe you say something back to the person. Guess it's important that you uh, tell the person you're sorry. Um, and ask on God for forgiveness. You know, say, Lord, I come, I mean, the person said something to me. I shouldn't have to say, I just shouldn't have said anything back. And Lord, forgive me. I really shouldn't do that. And I do feel bad about it. And just, just have a heart and just change your mind and your heart. But but try not to keep letting that thing about that person said to you keep entering your mind. Because if the person have not repented and have asked, asked you for forgiveness, don't worry about it. Forgive them anyway. You know, to forgive them anyway, okay? In the scriptures, um, we see that even God had repented. When we look at repentance, um, but you know, sin, sin is the sin is sin, and um, and all sin is bad to God. And it's only one sin you can't get forgiveness for. That's bless, 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 against the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um. Like you never, you never tell nobody they have a devil when they have the Holy Spirit in them. So we have to be careful how we that how we judge people. Okay. Um. God repented, but a lot of people look at the numbers twenty three nineteen as if, um, you know, God never repented. But actually, um, I'm gonna read the scripture to you. Okay, this page is here. Numbers twenty three nineteen says, "God is not a man that he shall lie." Okay, it's talking about God. Then it says, neither the Son of Man. He said the Son of Man, which is Yeshua, how much Jesus Christ, that he should repent. See, he's saying that Jesus never not repent. He didn't say God wouldn't repent. Had he said it, I mean, and like, to my God, had he said and shall not do it, or had he spoken and shall he not make it good? See, you know, God, like, you know, God gives us options many times. You know, like he'll say, I'm allowed this to happen if my people don't repent. Um, so it means that he gives us options, he gives us choices. 
he give us a um, time to um, to change his mind. You know, but if he says it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You know, sometimes as as uh, parents, you know, we can give our children options. You know, if you don't clean your room up, you won't get your iPad. <laughs> okay, if you don't, if you don't, uh, or you, you don't, or you won't have dinner, or you. Uh, you won't, you'll you be grounded you you know so there's 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 consequences to um to not do you know to not showing proper behavior if we, we don't show proper behavior but we, we don't obey God's commandments there's, there's there's consequences some people prayers don't be heard uh, you know people prayers don't be heard people um, especially if you have unforgiveness you might end up with cancer or something like that so uh, there's always consequences to our behavior good behavior yeah you get rewards bad behavior where there's consequences and there's punishments yeah so which do you desire uh, you know even out through school we learn you know, like i remember being in grade school you get stickers by your name if you did if you did well if you didn't do well, you didn't get any stickers, and you wasn't rewarded with good work and good words during that during the day. So there's always, all all through life, there's even on a job. If you do do a good job, you you get bonuses, you get commission. You know, if you don't, you don't get anything. All through life, this is what life teaches us: good behavior always give good rewards. Bad behavior, you know, nothing. Or bad results. I mean, this, this, this the way. I mean, it's, this, it's law. You reap what you sow. Okay, how did God repent? Let's let's look at um, even how God repented. What did God repent for? Let's see. Let's look at Genesis six, chapter five through six, and this is a God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So man's thoughts are so evil. Continual evil. And it says in 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. We don't want to grieve our father at his heart. We don't. So, so, what, so what is it saying? Is it that he felt sorry that he made man? If you're a parent. If your children really, really messed up, but those thoughts will go through your head that I shouldn't have any children. You know, I won't have to go through all this heartache and this pain if I didn't have children. You know, I mean, that goes through a parent's mind. It does. If your child disrespecting you, yeah, yeah, you might say that. I mean, not, not, yeah, yeah, you might say that. You know, you know, God have a lot of children. He's a whole, he have all of us. So, you know, souls, you know, God makes souls, so, so, yeah, the majority of his children mess up, you got children that kill, you got, you got, you had children that lie, cheap, fornicate, commit adultery, all sins, but yes, but, but the beautiful thing about that is when Yeshua, how much should Jesus Christ die for us, so we can ask for repentance, and God do forgive us, but iniquity, the continuing in sin, even though you know it's wrong, that's why he's he's really getting tired of that people. You continue to do sin and you know it's wrong. It's called iniquity. It's not doing no more. Just feel sorry for what you do. To so God, I really messed up. God feels you know what? We we don't look at we we don't feel sorry for sin. We put ourselves in a very dangerous place with the Lord. And not only does rebellious and pride all that rise up, but the the well the the gate or the door of hell even even open even wide widens too, because God will not deal with rebelliousness in heaven in the millennium. That's not going to happen. Don't expect you to get to heaven. If you're living in sin and don't feel bad about it, because what was happening in your heart because becoming hardened, and and if you do feel bad about it, you're not doing anything about it. 
that's dangerous too because then you know you know what's right and you continue to do what's wrong it's 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 like denying the cross you know it's like denying the cross denying what you should have done it's like it's like you don't care it's, it's like saying you just don't care but if you have a stronghold and it's hard for you to stop sinning that's a different issue that means you need deliverance and, and there's a stronghold which means that you need god's help so you call upon him to help you um let's, let's just look at another, another scripture really um the Lord repented. Um, Exodus 32, 14. It says, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Okay, again, the Lord repented. Which means he changed his mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he changed his mind. First, he felt sorry that he made man. Then he also changed his mind because he repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. I mean... You ever tell your children you can do something you change your mind? You ever tell your child maybe they can um, go a certain place and, and you know how, how bad they wanted to do it, but, but you change your mind? Mm -hmm. He repented you. Yeah. See, it's not that we don't we don't deserve punishment. We all do, cause we all have sin. But we have to look at the punishment Yeshua Hamashiach Jesus Christ allowed for Him to go through for us. So you know He took our place in that punishment, which means He allowed us to obey His commandments and the commandments of the Father, and to live a righteous and holy life, so that we won't have to to go through hell. But he went, he went through hell. Yeah. It's amazing the things that he went through. A lot of people don't realize all Yeshua went through for us. He went through so much for us. And to continue in sin, she's telling him that you don't care. That his blood and his body didn't mean anything. I remember living in sin. I felt bad. I did. I felt awful about it. You know, and I kept saying myself, well, I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. But you know, but, you know, you keep saying yourself, you're gonna stop. And you know, you become a stronghold. So you need know, ask God to help you, and to deliver you. Lord, deliver me. Lord, help me. I don't want to continue like this. I know it's displeasing to you. Lord, help me. I do not want this anymore. So, um, if you have a pastor, and the pastor not talking about repentance and feeling sorry for your sins, and if you keep talking this grace doctrine about uh, no matter what you do, God will forgive you. You know what? You put yourself in a dangerous place. He put himself himself in a dangerous place for teaching you such a thing, because if you don't feel sorry for what you do, if you don't repent, you put yourself in hell's fire. Because even now, these last, the beginning of the last days, we're in, we're in that great tribulation. Even now, and you're not putting, and you're not being serious about your faith walk. And as time goes on, it's gonna get harder and harder and harder for you to do right because there's so much wickedness and evil coming on the earth. Even now, fallen angels are here, devils everywhere. So now is the time for salvation. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to call upon the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Now is the time to get yourself right. Now is the time to get serious. And stop sinning. Now is the time to, be, to become righteous and holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Now is the time. Not later. Now. N-O-W now. Now is the time. Okay? So repentance. You know, we can um, all day long try
try to justify by why we do this, why we do that. Like, um, maybe you a fornicator, maybe thinking, well, you know, if I get married, you know, I'll lose part of my income. We got to think about it. Is your income more important than you live in a righteous holy life and, and go to heaven? Because... The chip is out there, people. The RFID chip is out there. If you take the chip, your right hand and your forehead, you will perish. Okay? I can't say you will perish. Because I'm not your judge. But the scriptures, the Revelation, Revelation talks about it. Revelation 13 chapter talks about it. Those who receive a mark on their right hand, their forehead. So, guys, do not receive a mark. When you, when you see the mark of the beast, there's definitely no more repentance for you. Because you have chosen hell. You have chosen. I tell you what. I can't say there's no more repentance either. Again, I can't say that either. Because, because it's, it, cause when you're overtaken by Satan, that's what the mark does. It, it fuses your DNA with the DNA of Satan. And you have no control over your will, mind, and emotions. Okay? If you can repent even through that, and it would be a hard thing to do. It would be a hard thing to do. Oh, that's, about, oh, that's a terrible place to be. Do not allow yourself to be overtaken by no devil. Do not allow yourself to be, be, be chipped. Stay away from flu shots. Stay away from those Ebola shots. They try to get people. Stay away from those shots because they have the chip in them. Which right now they they just they using it. They using it to to track you down. People, do not be overtaken because you become overtaken. You will go and eat eat people up. Become a zombie. You eat human flesh. And women, if you have having abortions, you repent. Repent. If you're coveting for all for your neighbor, your neighbor's things, repent. Not keeping it a day of the week holy and set aside for the Lord, repent. Keep on um Worse, I mean, keep on celebrating these pagan holidays like Christmas and Easter, things like that. Repent. God is calling his true children out. Out of the world. He don't he don't like our he don't like the holidays of the world. He he wants to keep his feast days. You keep Passover, all unlimited bread, and you keep Pentecost and keep um uh, Tabernacles, you keep those. Repentance. Feeling sorry. And changing your mind. Repent. May the Lord keep you. May his light shine upon you. Shalom.